Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. A 21st century war between world superpowers might look a lot different than we would expect. Instead of aircraft carriers and infantry, we'll have battles of information, campaigns of economic aggression, and technological and cultural sabotage. There would be psychological manipulation of the other side's population and the gradual sowing of discontent, working through society like a slow, deadly poison. There is more than one way to conquer. Maybe the other side doesn't need to bomb our cities or send a parade of their tanks through the street. Maybe they can let us do the work, conquer ourselves. One of the scariest parts of a war like this is it would be difficult to even know you were at war. A clever adversary knows it might not be in their best interest to come right out and declare a war on you. Maybe what they're after isn't destruction, but something more like control. One of the easiest ways to establish control over another party is to have them perfectly dependent on you. It's common to hear about the importance of energy independence, that it's unwise for a country like the U.S. to rely too heavily on other countries for a critical resource like oil or coal. It makes sense. A party in control of a country's energy would be in control of that country. Although this is true, when it comes to energy, there are always alternatives. In a pinch, there are always other sources, even if they're expensive or somehow undesirable. The trouble is, there is something we need, and there is no way it can be synthesized or transformed from something else. Rare earth elements can't be created, faked, or substituted, and these materials are in just about every critical new technology you can think of. Everything from electric car batteries and motors, to electronics, to computers, to lasers, to space technology, it all requires rare earth minerals, and a lot of this stuff. The term rare earth refers to 17 special chemical elements, a subset of the periodic table. The rare earth elements are a series of metals with very beneficial and sometimes unique physical properties. The most powerful magnets contain elements in the rare earth family. Scandium, yttrium, lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, neodymium, promethium, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, holmium, erbium, thulium, ytterbium, and lutetium. The term rare earth was coined in 1788 when a strange black rock was unearthed by a miner in Itterby, Sweden. The ore was called rare because nothing like it had ever been seen before. The earth in rare earth is the 18th century geological term for rocks that could be dissolved in acid. They're called rare earth minerals. The good news is these elements are not very rare in terms of how much is on Earth. These metals are actually abundant. The trouble is, they're only abundant in a few deposits on Earth. The rare earths are concentrated in the rock and soil in only a few select places. There's plenty of yttrium and gadolinium to go around, but access can be a problem. If you don't happen to be in the right spot in China, Russia, or Afghanistan, these elements can be difficult to find in anything more than trace amounts. Rare earth metals aren't scarce like iridium or tantalum. Even if you're in the wrong spot, if you dig deep enough, mine enough, refine enough, you can end up with an adequate supply of most rare earth elements. The infrastructure to do this is vast and the cost can run deep, but it's possible. The raw mined ore is usually mixed with all kinds of other materials. And most rare earth metal technological applications require a 99.9% .9 and even higher level of purity. Rare earth metal mining and processing is very expensive, requiring an entire grid's worth of electrical power and lakes of water for cooling, cleaning, and rinsing the processed ore. It's beyond costly, difficult, and tends to be a pollution disaster for the environment. For these reasons, many nations on earth have been more than happy to delegate this dirty work to one of the places rare earth elements are rich. One nation on earth happens to be swimming in rare earth minerals, but also glad to handle the unpleasant business of the mining and chemical processing. 
It's taken this country half a century to build up all the infrastructure, the workforce, factories, and equipment to make this happen. It would take other countries, even highly developed like the United States, decades to even begin to catch up. There is one country that has been slowly taking control of the world's supply of these critical materials. They've been making it clear that those who don't cooperate could lose all access to rare earth metals, miss out on developing all the most important technologies, and become even more dependent on the nations that do cooperate. This kind of power could be like an atom bomb. This kind of economic bomb could effectively send a nation back to the third world. It's fair to say that China has gained almost total world dominance over the rare earth mineral markets. In a 2021 ISPI report, 80% of rare earth element imports to the US and 98% of imports to Europe come from China. This year, in 2022, China threatened to cut off the United States from its supply, which would halt critical technological manufacturing and development and potentially send the economy into a tailspin. It was quite a threat, and possibly not an empty one. The prospect of China blocking or putting sanctions on the export of rare earths is not without precedent either. In the fall of 2010, the Chinese government was angry with Japan over an incident in disputed waters and decided to turn off the tap and start a rare earth metal trade embargo. At that time, it's estimated that Japan imported 95%, nearly all of its rare earth materials. It started when a Chinese fisherman was detained by the Japanese Coast Guard. News of his arrest led Chinese customs agents and government officials to hold up a number of shipments destined for Japan. Contained in those shipments were rare earth oxides, crucial for Japan's high-tech manufacturing. Before long, the price of rare earth metals went through the roof, going up several hundred percent in many cases. This action had immediate destructive consequences to Japan's economy and sent ripples through the whole world. China was showing its force, demonstrating Japan's dependence on them and broadcasting the message to the entire world. However, in a strange and interesting turn of events, this aggressive move may have backfired. Japan retaliated by building a new supply chain outside of China and expanding research and development in domestic minerals. The idea was to take some of the power back, and Japan's plan worked. As a result, China's global market share dropped from 95% to 70%. After the recent threat from the Chinese government to withhold rare earth elements to the US, this country finds itself in a similar position. It's a crisis and an opportunity. The US is in a unique position to put a big dent in China's control over the global market if it made a move toward rare earth independence. The first step is making sure the US military doesn't continue its reliance on Chinese rare earth imports, which even today are used in mission critical systems for lasers, night vision, mission guidance and radar systems. There have already been some initiatives started to make this happen, but finding alternative supplies of such specialty materials is very difficult. In every war and conflict, moves are followed by counter moves. Recently, the Chinese government made headlines when it announced Beijing would open up a friendly cooperation with Afghanistan's Taliban regime. I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say China's offer to the Taliban for a potential partnership didn't come from any openness or cultural curiosity. This proposition from the Chinese government is more likely due to some recently published geological studies that suggest Afghanistan is sitting on one trillion dollars worth of unmined rare earth minerals. It appears China is attempting to strengthen its grip on the supply, getting a hold on the newest potential gold mine. This is a political fight, but it's also a call on scientists and engineers to be as innovative as possible, to figure out new materials and new ways of making them. We need technologies that don't require conflict minerals or unsustainable processes that wreck the environment. These need to become critical design features, just like performance and cost. It won't be easy, and it may require a transformation 
in the way we design, manufacture, and consume products. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.